Hi guys, welcome back to Will the Beard Reviews. Tonight we're going to talk about Excalibur issue 16 written by Teeny Howard with art by Marcus 2. Now this is our first Excalibur issue post X of Swords. So the big question for this issue is what is the direction of Excalibur now and how does the impact of what happened in X of Swords, uh, how does that uh, impact the team? <laughs> so we've lost both Betsy and Apocalypse over the course of X of Swords and we've also kind of lost maybe our main narrative direction for X of Swords. I think a lot of what this book was doing uh, from its beginning uh, up until X of Swords was leading into X of Swords, doing a lot of uh, ground, laying a lot of groundwork and building things up that could play into X of Swords with everything going on with Otherworld, with Captain Britain, uh, all of that stuff. So where do we go from here? What does this book do? What does it look like? What does this team look like? And I think this is a very great direction for th this book going coming out of it. So um, I've been uh, not shy about my criticism about this book or about this title and I think this particular issue is maybe one of my favorites uh, since this book has started. Um, I feel like this uh, title has a direction now. The the team, the remaining uh, team members of Excalibur are trying to find Betsy because um, her death is indeterminate. Did she really die? Can she be brought back? Um, they approach X-Factor in this book and X-Factor is like, we don't know if she died so we're not going to try to bring her back so our team of Excalibur goes back to Otherworld to try and bring her back and I really like that direction because it seems like it actually gives us direction um, one of my main uh, complaints looking back at uh, Ex Excalibur prior to X of Swords was I didn't feel like this book had a direction you know you had your other books like um, X-Men which was very clearly seeding a bunch of different plot points that were going to play out pay off later then you had um X-Force, it was the um, the mutant CIA, you had Marauders, all of them seemed to have a direction that they were going, and I didn't quite never really know what Excalibur was doing until we got to X of Swords. Now that we're done with all of that, this book is very clearly going, it's like, look, we need to get Betsy Braddock back, that's our main goal, so I really like that aspect of it. And also, there's a theme that I'm sensing uh, amongst all of the current, uh, or at least most, of the, the Dawn of X titles, and that is mutants coming together to use their powers synergistically uh, more, uh, that their powers are more than just the sum of their parts. It's a very one plus one equals three um, type thing. So let's go ahead here and, and jump into the pages because, like I said, I think this is one of my favorite issues of Excalibur thus far. Alright, so our opening page here is just a great, sweet, simple page that I absolutely love, and I would honestly read a whole book, maybe even a whole little mini-series of just Gambit and Rogue at home, Gambit shirtless making some eggs that they smuggled in off of Krakoa, and, you know, Rogue just sitting there waiting for breakfast. It's sweet. I love these two characters. You guys know Gambit is my all-time favorite X-Men character, one of my favorite comic book characters. You can see all the Gambit stuff behind me here uh, on the shelf, so just seeing them here living a happy life game but just making breakfast is just absolutely amazing it's one of those you know slice of life things that you don't often see with big you know uh capes and punching style comic books but i i just love seeing it here um so they're just you know talking he's making her breakfast and she's um kind of just uh you know left a little rudderless after um everything that happened in x of sword she says uh, i just don't get it it's over uh we gone and done all that fool otherworld stuff we did uh paid the toll we did the deeds fought them monsters uh whole captain britain corps came back and now they're all betsy but but not our betsy it's it hasn't sunk in yet so they're just still everyone is reeling from the effects of otherworld and we've even got um over here um jubilee and richter um kind of experiencing the same thing jubilee walked around Krakoa with um, with Shogo there. Um, he's uh, not in his dragon form, back to a baby form, and she happens upon Richter, who's trying to reach out to Apocalypse through the Earth. He's got his uh, Grimoire here, Apocalypse's Grimoire, and he says, I was trying to, uh, I thought maybe if I focused somehow, I could get, uh, I could open up a way for him to talk to me, but I can't, and so I think that really plays into the mentor-mentee relationship that Apocalypse had and Richter had uh, before Apocalypse left, and I think Richter is going to kind of become our maybe new apocalypse or new leader of this, I'll use air quotes, coven um, of, um, you know, witchcraft or eh, wizardry, whatever, magic, whatever you want to call it that um, we're going to see play out here. So you can just see them all still reeling uh, after everything that happened. 
in X of Swords, and then again, a slice of life, Gambit and Rogue just go day drinking um, at the uh, at the Green Lagoon there, and uh, actually fill in uh, Fred Dukes here about what's going on. They're they're talking about what happened with Betsy, and he says, "Yeah, well, thanks for telling me. I, I'd heard some stuff about Betsy, but no one really filled me in yet. I'd kind of like to start the start day drinking myself." And they're like, "Come on, Freddie, pull up a seat." And so they're all just starting to day drink, and then um, Gambit, or, I'm sorry, uh, Richter and Jubilee walk in and they order up some drinks except for Richter because he apparently doesn't like drinking at noon come on who doesn't like drinking at noon I know I do don't tell anyone that So there's a little bit of discussion here about how the team or the individual members of the team feel about Apocalypse. Um, so um, uh, Rogue raises a glass for Betsy and then Richter says, oh, how about Apocalypse? And she says, no thanks. And Richter fires back and says, when he decided to show our people uh, our shared gifts, he chose you. Have a little respect. And she says, no, he didn't have the respect to ask me how I felt about it. But I'm real glad uh, he's happy with his wife now. So that t- it goes back to some of the earlier things that Apocalypse did and put uh, Rogue's life at danger. In danger, Richter says he wanted us to learn the greater mysteries of mutant kind before he left. He gave us purpose and something to explore. Now he's gone. Captain Britain's gone, and the rest of you are getting drunk at noon. And Gambit kind of steps in, you know, being the peacemaker, and he says, "We didn't lose Apocalypse. He left. Like it or not, he had somewhere else to be. Betsy got swindled by Saturnine. She deserves justice, but he chose to go, saying, like, look, he didn't, you know, get taken away from us. He walked away from us. He chose his wife and his family over." the rest of mutant kind here uh, on earth and so and then uh, Richter almost can't deal with he says well why then why did he start all of this if he wasn't going to finish it and I think the real answer is he is going to finish it he started t- uh, teaching you to pick up where he left off which we'll see um, uh, Richter kind of take that leading role in them uh, working through a spell uh, as a team later on so I think that's going to be the direction for Richter here and kind of you know how Apocalypse's influence is still going to be felt so they get the uh, the telepathic notice there that X Factor has finished their um, their investigation into Betsy's death and it has uh, uh, basically come to uh, inconclusive. They can't say whether she has died or not, and therefore they won't um, resurrect her. The status here says re- results inconclusive, no proof of death. Uh, request escal- uh, escalation to uh, experts. Rogue accuses them of, of blowing her of blowing them off. She says, "You're blowing us off, North Star. Inconclusive. I may as well have gone to some backwater human PD if I wanted this kind of nothing. You're blowing us off." With Rachel steps in and says, uh, "Go easy on him. We provide investigative services, finding bodies, tracking evidence. In this case, in our capacity as X Factor, we can't even tell if she's actually dead. I scanned everyone present at the tournament, and they saw what everyone else saw. There was no body. She wasn't otherwise injured, and there's no other." Um, evidence and so like like we we can't tell if she was she died and honestly I don't think anyone can really tell because she just kind of shattered I thought it was weird when I read it the first time I still think it's weird now I think Saturn 9 is playing up to some some weird crap I don't think I caught on to this quite as well as I should have when I was reading through um, uh, the all the acts of sword stuff because there was so much going on in there but I think what Saturn 9 was doing with um, with with Betsy or with Captain Britain was she wanted Brian to take back the or to take the the Starlight Sword so um, he could get shattered and then that was kind of a way of seeding the or reseeding the Omniverse with the Captain Britain um, presence I I don't know I don't know the best word for that but and that's why she wanted it to be Brian instead of Betsy but it was Betsy and now all of the Captain Britain core is uh, based on Betsy and I think um, uh, Obaluna Saturnine was going to bring back the original Brian after he had been shattered and reseeded the the Omniverse but now she's maybe not wanting to do that because it's Betsy and she doesn't like Betsy and thinks that uh, Brian should really be uh, the Captain Britain so we'll we'll see how that plays out that's just kind of my, my general theory about it. So with that, Rogue walks off and huff and says, well, I'm not sleeping on this. I don't know how many of y'all remember this, but I remember being on the other side of the X-Men, and I know Betsy does too. It never really leaves you. So Rachel chases after her and says, look, everyone agrees on what they saw. She shattered when that sword took its first good hit. Then Saturnine comes and gets the pieces. The whole Captain Britain quorum comes back. That sword and all seems like it's obvious. The, the, the last place she was seen was Otherworld and a, a realm of magic. I may be a professional 
professional detective, but I'd say we need the real experts to check this out and go to the scene of the crime. And they're like, what experts? And she says, duh, Excalibur. So it's going to take a team of magicians or magic-affiliated characters or a magic-affiliated team to go back and check it out. And so we've got our four remaining members of X-Force here going back to Avalon, uh, going to the court of Jamie Braddock to uh, gather, uh, to pick up Magan and go, or uh, Lady Gloriana as they're referring to her here, to go back and check out the scene of the crime. So here in the court of Avalon, we get some some fun interactions here. Um, and then King Jamie right here says, look who it is, some of Avalon's biggest fans. Captain Avalon says, it's good to see you, friends. The mood here has been most somber. I, I'm sure it has. And they have legitimate reason to grieve with Betsy being gone and everything. But still, just <laughs> the, the whole the whole uh, dynamic here, the atmosphere of the room is, is pretty funny. Uh, some conversation here. I love uh, the little girl here um, with the interaction with Gambit. It. Uh, she asks, uh, do you intend to, to bring Betsy back? And he says, that's my hope, Petit. Anytime Gambit calls someone Petit, it just, it warms my heart. I just love that, uh, um, the way he says that in the, uh, in the old X-Men, uh, cartoon show. Uh, she says, uh, excellent mother and I have been working together somewhat in her new capacity as court sorceress to uh, train, uh, to, uh, to try to investigate the Captain Britain's, uh, disappearance. And Rook is like, ah, you have a little spitfire, you. Uh, we got the info, uh, x Forder reported back in and she's not officially dead, uh, to which the girl says, Excellent, that's um, a, a quite useful conclusion indeed. Please, Lady Gloriana, if you would share your the uh, current theory with the court. Ah, so precocious, it's it's funny. I love it. Uh, so, uh, Magan says, uh, uh, cl Calling me sorceress is rather kind, but it seems uh, I have a, an undeniable connection to the land here in Otherworld, uh, like I did back home, but stronger. Uh, there, it felt like I was trying to get some world of... Uh, get get to some world of fairy on the other side of something, but here it's all around me and I'm steeping in, so she's very much in her uh, natural element, so the kind of rally the troops here and they're going to uh go off fun interaction here between uh the family the, she's like uh, I, the little girl's like oh, i dislike it when you discuss me like this when they're talking about uh watching the baby and things like that so uh king jamie uh not to be uh under or overdone by everyone else uh, he was told that he should not muck around in other realities uh to bring betsy back but he has other ideas so he straps on his uh mr sinister cape and goes to see a sinister as we'll see here in a second. So they go out there into Otherworld, and Megan definitely feels like she is in her element, like almost immediately, as she says, uh, she this is the first time she's felt so unburdened in a long time, immediately making a connection with the land and almost opening a portal there as they get to um, the spot where, where Betsy died. Um, and so then here uh, they ask Richter if he's going to you know try one of his spells, and they're like, "What are you doing? It's not it's not it's not some it's not just like a cookbook." And he's like, "Oh, it's exactly like a cookbook," which is a really interesting way of uh, talking about uh, a book of magic like that. So here, uh, King Jamie wearing his toga and uh, Mister Sinister cape, looking very fashionable I'll, I'll say with air quotes there goes to sinister and basically requisitions a betsy braddock clone which you know that's just very mr sinister and very uh king jamie there uh messing around with things he probably shouldn't uh so as they're um here in other world trying to figure out what you know their next steps are what's going on uh richter starts putting this this spell together he says um here take my hand betsy was here uh in this place last what if she left some sort of imprint and so he grabs hands uh with, with megan and he said they say I'm, I'm talking to the ground here to help you can you hear it and she says yes then he reaches out for gambit and he says okay what do you want me to do blow something up and he's like no uh that feeling a kinetic energy what if it was a different kind of energy what Whatever it is that makes our powers, I'm assuming our as mutants, and they're like, he says, actually says here, yeah, like mutant energy, then they pull Jubilee in, they say, like magical energy, Jubilee, we need your lights, there are fairies everywhere here, right, maybe they can help us find Betsy, maybe they've seen her, and so she kind of sends up uh, a signal you can see here kind of calling the fairy. And she says down here, let our powers combine, yes, but by our powers combined, we are Captain Planet, or... Excalibur, whatever you want to say, and so um, that everything starts going crazy. Uh, Gambit says, "What is happening uh, to all that peace and serenity?" And Megan, or uh, 
Rogue says, well, fairies are pretty chaotic little shits, ain't they? And Richter says, yeah, we're going to have to do this really quick. Then they pull in Rogue as a power conduit, so definitely 1 plus 1 equals 3 in this situation, uh, making everything more and more. And so they call forth the entirety of the new Betsy Braddock-based Captain Britain Corps and talk to them about uh, how their reality's Betsy, Betsy, or Captain Britain Prime, I would think, is missing. And they're like, yeah, we're we're worried about that too and so they set about um, trying to figure out uh, next steps there and then here's kind of our outline we've seen this before in Excalibur but now we've got our characters in there um, Sir Richter is there and then we've got uh, Gloriana Jubilee Gambit and and Rogue kind of showing us how uh, the spell works and then over here we get a glimpse of where Betsy might actually be so the, the narration here says I am a stranger here, seek serenity of mind all pain will pass my physicality is but a vessel I leave a body behind they say your consciousness has been restored you are Captain Britain, you defend the sovereignty of each individual realm within the multiverse you are accountable only to a council of the self the starlight sword is yours to wield but where is your hand and so we see her here in probably some alternate dimension looks like she's queen or something to that effect it looks like either that's her or maybe one of her um uh you know family tree or something there in the background and warren uh is there with her so we'll see what that is in a future issue so i really enjoyed uh this issue seeing the team come together i definitely feel like um what is going on there with uh the, the magical spell where they involved everyone is very reminiscent of what's been going on in a lot of the other books we have obviously the five on the doing uh the resurrection duties we have the six that we saw in sword uh we also have um the last issue of new mutants was talking about synergizing uh, power sets, and then we had in um, uh, Empire X Men that mini series where they ran basically big explosive offensive plays, combining different mutant powers and things like that. So I think that's going to be a, a theme uh, going forward, and we'll see how that plays out. Guys, what did you think about Excalibur issue 16? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If it's your first time here at the channel and you enjoyed that video or this video, do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button for me. It would mean a lot. And until next time, we'll see you at the comic shop.